My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Now that it's winter time, it's cold, snowy, icy, I figured I would do an episode in regards to your sleep system and how to stay warm at nighttime. The things that you really need to focus on, the things that you need to do and not do. In this episode, I'm going over my favorite tips for cold weather camping when it comes to going to bed, when it comes to sleeping in your sleeping bag. These tips are super important. Not only will you stay warmer with them, but they could save your life. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, my friends, my first tip begins right here, basically where your face is going to be inside of your sleeping bag. The death of a sleeping bag is condensation. It's moisture buildup. And that's why you need to make sure to keep your face outside of your sleeping bag. You may be tempted to put your face, your head inside of your sleeping bag to breathe in it. And yes, that will warm things up temporarily. But what you're doing is this, you're introducing moisture inside of your sleeping bag. And again, moisture and condensation is the death of a sleeping bag. A wet sleeping bag significantly loses its warming abilities. It takes time for it to dry and also it makes you wet and damp which is dangerous. So no matter what, keep your face out of your sleeping bag. If you're concerned about your face getting cold, don't worry, I have a solution to that in this episode. The next tip that I have is equally as important. When you hop inside of your sleeping bag, you may be tempted to do so with all of your warm weather clothes on. So maybe you have long johns, you have your thermals on, your pants, you have a shirt, a mid layer, your down jacket, and so on. This is why this is a bad idea. When you hop inside of your sleeping bag, you have all of your clothes on, you're nice and warm, people tend to fall asleep and that's when they begin to sweat. Your sleeping bag should be adequate for the conditions that you're sleeping in. It should be taking care of you as far as warmth goes, not your clothing. With this being the case, it's best to hop inside of the sleeping bag with less clothes on. If you see that you're still cold, then you can add the clothing. You're doing all of this so you do not sweat, so you do not get wet, you don't get damp, your sleeping bag doesn't get wet, and neither does your clothing. If you're inside of your sleeping bag, you're hot, you're sweaty, you will only be hot and sweaty for a short period of time before the opposite happens. You begin to get cold. As that moisture begins to evaporate, you will cool down. And that will happen because that's the way the human body cools itself. It sweats, there's moisture, it evaporates, you get colder. Also, if you sweat all night long in your clothing, as soon as you get out into the wind, into the cold, you are going to be absolutely miserable and it could be a dangerous situation. All of this goes back to the old saying in regards to like cold weather conditions, if you sweat, you die. That's why you don't use a product that's going to get you wet in cold conditions. That's why you have to be very careful with products like wind sacks or bothy bags, for an example. Moving on, this is one of my favorite tips to share for cold weather camping. So as you hop into your sleeping bag, change your socks. Take those socks off that you've been wearing all day, the ones that are kind of wet, damp, sweaty, whatever. Take those off and put on a fresh pair of warm socks. At the same time, get your hand warmers ready. You take a package that contains two hand warmers and you put one in each sock down by your toes. You can put the hand warmers anywhere you want to, but I personally like to take them and put them underneath my toes at the tip. That works best for me and I stay super warm. If you have issues with circulation, don't do this because these do get warm. If you do not have issues with circulation, unless there's just some sort of problem with the hand warmer, you don't have to worry about getting burned or anything like that. I've been doing this for over 20 years and I've never had any sort of issues. Everyone that I know who camps in cold conditions does this, no one's ever had an issue. No one's ever been burned. This works incredibly well and it's a great way to stay warm all night long. Considering the fact that these you know, stay warm for about 10 hours, this works great. Before moving on, here's a pro tip for you all. If you have any clothing that's wet, damp, sweaty, keep it out of your sleeping bag. Again, to maximize the heat potential of your sleeping bag, keep wet items out of it. The next tip that I have for you is in regards to your hat and your mask. I spoke earlier about having a cold face. This is the solution. First, actually before we get to that, you need to make sure that you have your toboggan on, your beanie, whatever you want to call it. Now moving on to your face, something like this is going to work extremely well. This is a face mask. You can find these in all different types. You can make your own. Making your own is rather simple. All you need is some merino wool. You can take your old merino wool shirt, cut it up, make a mask out of it. This is the mask that I personally like to use. This is from IO Merino Wool. Unfortunately, it's been discontinued, but again, you can find all sorts of masks out there. You can use buffs and so on. Merino wool really works well for this application. It's warm, it's cozy, it feels good, and I like it. I like this product. But using a face mask is super important especially when it's cold. And I mean like really cold. When you're camping at zero degrees Fahrenheit, you have icicles on your face, you will appreciate something like this. This is going to assist you with staying warm all night long. And also it's going to keep your face out of that sleeping bag. 
The next tip is in regards to your sleeping pad setup. In cold weather conditions, your sleeping bag is only going to be as effective as the sleeping pad and mats underneath it. You have to protect yourself from conduction, and that's where the cold ground pulls heat away from you. That's why I recommend having at least two layers for cold weather camping. What I personally like to go with is a closed cell foam mat on the ground, then my air mattress on top. This works incredibly well and helps with the heat loss from the cold ground. My next tip involves something just like this. This is a stainless steel water bottle. You can heat up water and you can put this inside of it. Then you can take this, put it inside of your sleeping bag with you, and you have a nice warm object to hold on to all night long. If you're extremely cold, you may be tempted to put this down by your feet. Don't do that. There's a better place for this object and it's between your legs. You have numerous arteries down there that will pump blood all over your body. So take this, put it down there, and you will be incredibly warm if you're super, super cold. Personally, I like to use stainless steel bottles for this application. You can use plastic bottles and whatnot, but you have to keep in mind that oftentimes plastic will react with hot water, releasing chemicals and so on. So once you heat up water and put it in a plastic bottle, don't drink from it. That's basically a one and done sort of thing. If you're going to take an object like this, put it inside of your sleeping bag, make sure that lid is on super, super tight. Make sure that it's a container that you trust. You need to know for certain that it doesn't leak before you put it inside of your sleeping bag. I know I don't have to mention this, but common sense does play a role in this. If you put boiling water inside of this and this becomes super, super hot, be careful with it. You may want to put something around it so you don't burn yourself. Just be careful. I know I don't have to say anything, but <laughs> I gotta cover my bases here. The next tip that I have for you all involves food. The closer that you eat before you go to bed, the warmer you will be. As your body digests food, it breaks down food, it warms you up. That's especially true with high fat foods. Fat is more difficult for the body to break down, to digest, and that will keep you warmer longer. Basically, it's like feeding a stove. You wanna put the materials in there that will burn the longest. And in this case, it's high calorie, high fat foods. That will do the trick. A few examples of calorie rich foods include chocolate, cheese, and nuts. The next tip involves going to the bathroom. If nature calls, go. Do not hold it. If you have to go pee, go pee because the body will divert energy to your urine to keep it warm and at the same time this is going to cool you down. Because we're talking about wintertime conditions you may want to use a pee bottle and that goes for guys and gals. There's a benefit to doing this. After you're done you can take that bottle and you can use it to keep warm. The temperature of your urine is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty warm, and that can supply you with some heat, just in case you need it. It goes without saying, make sure that the bottle does not leak beforehand. You definitely don't wanna have urine inside of your sleep system, but if it's a good bottle, it's trustworthy, you will appreciate the warmth. The next point for you all to consider is this. It's super important. Never assume that the temperature rating on your sleeping bag is accurate for you. Everybody's different. Some people run hot, some people run cold. So let's say that you're going out for a cold weather trip. It's going to be about 20 degrees that night and you have a 20 degree sleeping bag. You need to make sure that that bag will keep you warm specifically at 20 degrees because everyone's different. If you run cold at 20 degrees, you may be freezing inside of that bag. The key point here is that you really need to test out your sleeping bag system before you take it out into the wilderness. You need to make sure that you're going to be comfortable in the conditions that you're camping in. You need to know just how well each piece of gear performs for you, not for anyone else, it doesn't matter. You have to remember that every single person is different. So make sure to test out your sleeping bag before heading out. Since we're talking about sleeping bags, let's go over to the next point. It's very important that you have a sleeping bag that fits you correctly. If it's too small, if it's too big, it's not going to keep you warm efficiently you're going to have issues. For an example, if you have a sleeping bag that's too big, you're going to have a lot of what's known as dead space. And that's just going to be a cold pocket. That's an area that eventually you will interact with as you toss and turn and move around. If you're stuck in a situation where you have a bag that's simply too big, fill up that empty space with clothing, gear, and so on, as long as it's dry and as long as it's clean. Basically what you're doing there is filling up the empty space and making the bag more efficient and keeping you warm. For this episode, this is the last tip that I have for you all, and it's a good one. I mentioned before at the very beginning with the tips that you need to go to bed without wearing all of your clothes, right? You need to go in and see how well it performs and add clothing as needed. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, I'm going to bed cold, what can I do? Before you go to bed, move around a little bit. Now this is the important part. You move around, you do some squats, do some push-ups, do whatever you want to, but don't sweat. You warm up, you get to the point of being warm, and you stop there, you do not sweat. Again, everyone, if you sweat, if you get wet, there's a potential for major problems. It could be deadly. You could do push-ups, you could do squats, jumping jacks, do whatever you have to do to warm up, but again, 
don't sweat. Well, my friends, for this episode, that is it. Those are the cold weather tips that I have for you all in regards to going to bed in your sleeping bag. All of these tips together will keep you warm. They will keep you safe. The most important point out of all of these tips is that you have to stay dry. That's super important. Stay dry, don't sweat, don't get damp. The quickest way to having a problem in cold weather camping is to get wet and to get damp. Make sure to comment down below and share your favorite cold weather camping tips. Did I miss some? Maybe I did. There's plenty of ways to stay warm in the outdoors during the winter, but these here are some of my favorite tips. Make sure to hit the thumbs up because it does help the channel. You can hit the thumbs down if you disliked it. You can subscribe if you want to. The Outdoor Gear Review is agenda free. I'm here to share my thoughts and opinions on gear, to share adventures, and that is it. For now, folks, I'm done. Strength and honor. See ya.